So, good morning and welcome back to our NPTEL lecture series on classics in total synthesis part 1. So, we have been discussing uh, total synthesis of uh, triquinanes and in the last week we talked about total synthesis of triquinanes using photochemical reaction uh, for example, Paternobuchi reaction as the key reaction uh, to form uh, triquinanes reported by Viresh Rabel's group. So, we will continue our discussion on total synthesis of uh, triquinanes where photochemical reactions have been used as the key reaction. Okay. So, today uh, we will talk about maybe 4 or 5 uh, total synthesis and the first one which we will discuss is uh, the total synthesis of sylphy perfol 6 in 5 ohm. And this synthesis particular synthesis was reported by uh, Demuth and Hinsken and interestingly what they have used is an oxodipimethane rearrangement induced by photochemical condition. And overall if you look at the whole synthesis though the number of steps are little bit more the strategy of using oxodipimethane rearrangement to get the triquinane is a unique one. And the starting material that is the diene which is required for the asymmetric Diels-Alder reaction was started from chiral enone which we will discuss. From the retrosynthetic point of view uh, this natural product can be obtained from this particular compound. Uh, you can see what one has to do is 2 methyl groups as well as the double bond should be introduced that can be done by first introducing a double bond here. Then you add a methyl group followed by quench with methyl iodide then introduce a double bond. So, one can do it in 3 to 4 steps and this ketone can be obtained uh, from another ketone and why this ketone was introduced you will know that is because for the photochemical oxodipimethane rearrangement this ketone is required and before that this ketone should be reduced and protected. And this particular ketone can be obtained from this tetracyclic compound. Okay. See now you can see a cyclopropane. Okay. So, this is formed through the oxodipimethane rearrangement and reductive opening of this cyclopropane followed by quenching with methyl iodide you will get this intermediate. Okay. And the key reaction here is the oxodipimethane rearrangement of this tricyclic compound. And when you look at this tricyclic compound as you know it can be obtained from a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction wherein this is the diene. Okay. This diene can be obtained from uh, a commercially available compound as well as uh, one can make this in large quantity uh, from Hages uh, Parish ketone and that is nothing but uh, if you have this instead of alcohol if you have ketone that is Hages Parish ketone and that can be obtained from 2 methyl cyclopentane 1 3 dione using L proline as the catalyst one can do a Michael addition followed by aldol reaction which we normally call it as a Robinson annihilation sequence. Okay. So, the starting material for this is uh, 2 methyl cyclopentane 1 3 dione which is commercially available. So, before we go into the details of the total synthesis reported by Marty Demuth, we will discuss the key reaction which is oxodipimethane rearrangement. So, what is that? So, if you have a system like this that is you know you can call it as allyl ketone. Now, under photochemical condition first this carbonyl will form a di radical same thing will happen with the double bond. So, that can lead to the formation of this type of cyclopropane assume that this is CH2. Okay. So, this right di radical what will happen next it will open up. So, how it will open up? So, they will open up like this and it will lead to the formation of original ketone. Ketone we started with you will get the ketone back as well the resultant di radical now you can see here this is a radical this is a radical they will combine to form the cyclopropane assume that this is CH2. 
ok. So, basically if you do an oxidipymethane rearrangement you can see the formation of cyclopropyl ok. And this one can do on bicyclic system, tricyclic system and here is an example of where you, where you have a bicyclic system. So, that will give like this tetra radical and uh, then what will happen this tetra radical immediately you can see it will form a cyclopropane ok. Then this radical on the oxygen will come back and then open this cyclopropane to give this bicyclic di radical. This bicyclic di radical one can easily redraw like this ok. You can see here this is 1, this is 2, this is 4, this is 5. So, that is a 5 membered ring and the remaining is 6 membered ring. Now, these 2 di radical will combine to form the tricyclic compound in that the third ring is a cyclopropane. So, this is the oxidipymethane rearranged product ok. This can be easily obtained from any bicyclic compound having a carbonyl and double bond at appropriate place. When you do that one can also expect another product which is normally minor product that is arising out of 1,3 acyl shift. That is when you do a photochemical reaction on this ketone first Norris type 1 cleavage will take place where you have you generate this di radical followed by migration of the double bond ok. The, the double bond will migrate and you will get the corresponding allyl radical ok. What will happen now this will migrate or here you can write like this and these di radical will combine to form cyclobutanol ok. So, one can see using oxidipymethane rearrangement you can get a cyclopropane or if you use 1,3 acyl shift then you will get a cyclobutanol ok, 6 membered ring fused with cyclobutanol. Now, let us see how Demuth synthesized this natural product. He started with 2 methyl cyclopentane 1,3 dione which we saw during the retrosynthetic analysis. Then using the Robinson annihilation sequence first Michael addition with methyl vinyl ketone followed by treatment with S proline and dehydration you get the Hages parish ketone ok. You have an enone and a ketone and the ketone can be selectively reduced with 0.25 equivalents of sodium borohydride in ethanol at 0 degrees to get this alleric or this alcohol. And once you have this alcohol then you can protect this alcohol as mom ether ok. And if you treat with LDA TMS chloride, if you treat with LDA TMS chloride, so it will generate anion here and then it will form an enolate, that enolate will become enol TMS. And this is the diene. Now, he did Diels-Alt reaction with uh, malic anhydride to form this tetracyclic compound, ok. So, this is the intermediate and this intermediate you can see this is the transient state, ok. This is the transient state and this gives this tetracyclic carbon. Now, this anhydride if you look at this anhydride should be converted into double bond. So, he used a electrolysis method like hydrolysis followed by di decarboxylation to give the double bond. And this is the key precursor for the oxidipymethane rearrangement. So, Taking this compound and then shine light, it undergoes oxidipymethane rearrangement. And as I mentioned earlier about how oxidipymethane rearrangement takes place, first it will form this tetra radical and followed by formation of the cyclopropane and opening of this 3 membered ring, you will get uh, another di radical, and whereas uh, this will be a carbonyl group. And once you have this di radical and you can you can number it you know for better understanding always better you number the starting material ok, you give numbering. So, the 6 membered ring you can give numbering and then see where the radicals are in the starting material 
and when you redraw the structure for better understanding you can give the number and then you can easily make out where these two radicals are. Once these two radicals you can write and that will form the corresponding cyclopropane. And as I said there is a possibility of forming 1,3 acyl shift also of course the yield is only 5 percent and the main product is only the required one that is the cyclopropane formation. So, this tetracyclic compound next is reductively open ok. So, lithium tri diisopropyl amine and TMS chloride. So, what happens this will be cleaved this cyclopropane will be cleaved and then it will form it will form the corresponding enol TMS ok this will form the corresponding enol TMS because you are using lithium diisopropyl amine and conjunct with TMS chloride because that enolate once it is generated you trap that enolate with the corresponding TMS chloride. Once you have that that is the first step and the second step the enol TMS ether can be cleaved with any fluoride source. So, that is what they have done they have done with this uh, benzyl trimethyl ammonium fluoride to cleave the enol TMS to generate the O minus and the O minus you quench with methyl iodide ok you quench with methyl iodide you stereo selectively introduce the methyl group ok. So, now if you count the number of carbon atoms you will see here in this ring you have 6, here you have 2, 8 and then here you have 3 and then here you have 1 ok. Next step is to remove the carbonyl group. So, you do not want the carbonyl group ok. This can be done in many ways, but what they have done is they have protected the ketone as dithiotyrbit ok. Then you remove the MOM group ok, you remove the MOM group is using titanium tetrachloride you get the hydroxyl group at this point you can remove the dithiene using a combination of titanium tetrachloride Lewis acid and a reducing agent. So, they use titanium tetrachloride and lithium aluminum hydride to get the corresponding CH2. So, the deoxygenation of carbonyl group was done in two step first you protect the dithiene then remove that with titanium tetrachloride and LH. Now, what you need to do you have to oxidize the alcohol to ketone ok. Then you have to introduce the two methyl groups and then double bond. So, here you use some uh, expensive reagent. So, first you treated with LDA TMS chloride which you know it will form the corresponding enol TMS. Then for introducing the double bond you use DDQ and this uh, exotic reagent uh, which looks like exotic reagent, but it is not it is uh, a reagent derived from trifluoroacetamide ok. Take trifluoroacetamide and then you treat with trimethyl silyl chloride you get this. So, this is the reagent you know you can you can get a double bond or you can introduce a double bond next to the ketone. Next you have to introduce two more methyl groups one here and one here, but at the same time the double bond should be kept intact. So, how it can be done first you add the 1 4 addition on the double bond with lithium dimethyl cuprate and quench the enolate with methyl iodide to get the two methyl groups and then repeat the same process repeat the same process. So, that is you introduce a double bond via enol TMS followed by oxidation to get the natural product ok. So, that way if you look at this synthesis uh, the key step in the synthesis was the oxadipy methane rearrangement and they started from commercially available 2 methyl cyclopentane 1 3 dione and then they use Robinson annulation as a key step to uh, make the next starting material that is Agis Parish ketone and overall this total synthesis was accomplished in 11 longest linear steps uh, with an overall yield of 1.6 percent yield. So, now we will move to another very short uh, total synthesis uh, reported by Oyehara ok. Here again as I said we will be discussing only the 
photochemical reaction which has been used as the key reaction in the synthesis of triclonates. And what he has used in this particular synthesis is photochemical 1,3 acyl shift. In the earlier synthesis which we saw where oxadipimethane rearrangement as the key reaction. And there also he got 1,3 acyl shift product as a minor product. In this particular case, Viagra has used photochemical 1,3 acyl shift as the key step and that is a main reaction to get the key starting material or key intermediate. So, let us see his retrosynthesis and when you look at this capnoline as I said whenever you have a functional group or if you do not have many functional groups you can introduce a functional group ok. So, here you have a functional group a double bond but that may not be sufficient sometimes when you do a proper retrosynthetic analysis. So, it is better to introduce another functional group which can facilitate the retrosynthesis to get a simpler starting material. So, that is how what Vehara has done he has introduced a carbonyl group at the middle ring. The idea is if you introduce a carbonyl group then one can do an intramolecular alkylation ok. So, that is what he planned. So, you can see you can if you make this as a good leaving group ok. If you make this as a good leaving group then you can generate anion and you can form the third 5 membered ring isn't it. So, that was the idea. So, for introducing the carbonyl group then you can introduce a double bond here. The reason for introducing the double bond is this 4 carbon unit can be added stereoselectively using a 1 4 addition reaction. And now if you look at this you reduce this double bond and introduce a double bond here. What for that is how he can use the photochemical reaction that is 1 3 acyl shift to get this compound. Let us see how he made this compound in the real synthesis and how from there he used the 1 3 acyl shift to get this bicyclic compound. The total synthesis start, started with metacrosol methyl ether, metal ammonia reduction gave the diene and you treat with soda mite when you treat with soda mite then it will generate an anion and the migration of the double bond will take place to give this type of diene or you can, you can this will give this type of diene, but this is the most uh, stable diene. So, you get this diene and this can undergo diel sol reaction with alpha chloroacalonitrile. Uh, alpha chloroacalonitrile is a synthetic equivalent for ketene ok. So, ketene uh, normally cannot undergo 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction. So, that is why indirectly you have to use some equivalent which can give ketene in the product. So, alpha chloroacalonitrile is one of the best synthetic equivalents for ketene. So, you do the diel sol reaction with alpha chloroacalonitrile. Now, if you treat with potassium hydroxide and DMSO that will hydrolyze this to ketone ok. Try to write mechanism for this ok. So, mechanism for the hydrolysis of chloro nitro nitrile adduct to the ketone. It is a very interesting mechanism. Take this bicyclic uh, ketone and then treat with potassium tertiary butoxide, excess potassium tertiary butoxide and methyl iodide. You can introduce 2 methyl groups next to the ketone ok. Then when you reduce this with sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride, you get a mixture of endo and exo alcohol. So, this is endo and this is exo alcohol. So, almost you get 1 is to 1 ratio. These two will give 2 different products upon treatment with acids. For example, if you take this endo alcohol, so first it will protonate the hydroxyl group and that will be a leaving group. Now, the bond which is anti to the leaving group. So, this is this is the bond which is anti to the leaving group that is the OH bond and this is the bond which is anti to that ok. That will migrate and what will you get if you use Lewis acid is ok.
you will get this product. So, this is nothing but if you look at you can write like this that is because the C this C C bond which is anti to the leaving group migrates. So, if you do the same thing with XO, XO alcohol now which bond is anti to that? So, this is the bond and this bond is anti to this. So, that will migrate if you treat with acid and this will migrate. So, that will give you this bicyclic ketone ok and this can be redrawn like this ok. It is a 5 member, 5 member ring here and 6 member ring here. So, what you have to notice in this is if you use endo alcohol you get the corresponding alpha beta unsaturated ketone, but if you use exo alcohol you get ketone and the double bond moves to the 5 member ring other ring ok. No problem and you can also write it like this and then now you shine light. So, uh, what it will happen first the Norris type 1 cleavage to generate the di radical followed by migration of the double bond. Now, this C C bond can rotate is not it this C C bond can rotate and when you rotate you can see this di radical this di radical will combine to form the corresponding 5 member ring. And if you rotate this by 180 degree ok you can you can go through this and then rotate it by 180 degree and you will get this compound ok. Hydrogenate the double bond as I said you have to shift the double bond here you do not want the double bond here you want the double bond here. So, first you reduce the double bond then introduce the double bond. So, this is done using uh, Suji trust method where you generate the enol, enol carbonate, enol allyl carbonate and followed by treatment with palladium acetate you get the double bond. So, once you have the double bond next is to add the 4 carbon unit in a 1 4 fashion. So, take this enone and add this 1 uh, 4 carbon unit you will get this product. Now, as I said next you have to make this as a good leaving group generate anion and then form the third ring. So, for that you have to remove the TBDPS get the alcohol convert it to good leaving group. So, TBDPS can be easily removed if you treat with acetic acid get the alcohol convert that into tosylate. So, tosylate is a good leaving group. Now, you take this compound treat with lithium hexamethyl disulfide. Okay, so, it will generate anion and intramolecularly attack the carbon bearing O tosylate in a SN2 fashion and you introduce the third ring. So, what is left now is to remove the ketone. So, reduce the ketone to alcohol convert that into xanthate sodium hydride carbon disulfide methyl hydride OH will be converted to xanthate and the xanthate can be reductively cleaved using tributylene hydride and AABL. So, so, to summarize so if you look at the total synthesis of Oyehira and uh, Shinari Yamamoto um, of capnelin they started with uh, a simple commercially available starting material that is metacrasa methyl ether. So, they did birch reduction conjugation diel sol reaction to get the bicyclic 2 to 2 octinone. Then the key reaction that is 1 3 acyl shift was done under photochemical condition to get a 5 member ring and 6 member ring and later they do they did functional group transformation to achieve successfully the total synthesis of capnelin. Overall they took about uh, 13 longest linear steps however the overall yield is quite good about 3.7 percent yield. So, with this uh, we, we have discussed few more total synthesis based on photochemical reaction as the key reaction. We will continue our discussion on synthesis of few more triquinanes again using photochemical reaction in the next lecture ok. Thank you.